Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the first English 3 grammar video. This one is on sentence patterns and punctuation, and we're going to look at the basics of what that is. Before we get talking about that, though, I want to talk about what these videos are and what they're going to be. They're going to be hosted on the wiki page. They're going to be put up on YouTube, and you're going to need to watch these videos before you get to class on the day that they're due. And I'll go over that more in a little bit. But what that's going to do is that's going to open up class time for more interaction between the student and the teacher, for more participation, for more problem solving and troubleshooting if you're not understanding the concepts uh, of grammar, the way that we're teaching them. Um, so here's what you're going to need to do with regards to these videos before you get to class. Number one, you're going to need to watch the video. Again, that'll be hosted on YouTube. There'll be a link. You'll know how to get there. You're also going to need to take notes on the video. What is important? Jot that stuff down. You have to make sure that you clearly label the sentence pattern in your notebook or in your binder. Those patterns are something that you're going to be referencing all year long got to make sure you write that down. If it doesn't make sense what the sentence pattern is right now, that's okay. We're going to go over that in about five minutes, so sit tight. Um, there's going to be an exercise at the end of the video. You're going to need to write that down in your notebook, in your binder as well, and bring that to class prepared to show uh, the teacher, to prepared to go over potentially. And lastly, you're going to need to come prepared with any questions that you have. Was there a, a concept that is confusing to you? Were the terminology that didn't make sense? What do you still need help with or still need clarification on? Come prepared with those, ready to ask those. So, first, why does punctuation matter? Why is this important? When we write, we use certain rules so our message is clear. Think of it like this. When you talk to somebody face to face, you can pick up a lot of nonverbal clues, facial gestures, hand gestures, little ticks or wry smiles. All of those are, are clues to help us understand their meaning. When we write, we don't see the person who is communicating with us. And punctuation stands in for some of those clues to help us understand the meaning. When those rules are broken in writing, the message that we're trying to communicate can get muddled. And that's not what we want. We want to be clear in our writing. We want to be thoughtful in our communication. Let's look at this, for example. This sentence, take a moment, see if you can understand that, see if you can read what that says. This sentence is, is, is tricky because there are no spaces, there's no punctuation. It's breaking the rules. We can understand it, but it's, it's much more difficult than we're used to. Here's another example. Have a look at this one. Same deal. Had we originally learned to read backwards and upside down, this would make plenty of sense. But that's not the rules that we know. And that's what we're trying to do, is make sure we understand the rules of English language so we can communicate clearly and easily. So, getting back to the topic of this video, what in the heck is a sentence? Over time, writers and printers created these standard rules to help the readers understand the message. The most basic structure, the most basic rule, is the idea of a sentence. Sentences can express emotions. They can give orders, they can make statements, they can ask questions. A sentence brings words together in a unified stream of thought. All that philosophical mumbo jumbo aside, what does a sentence do? It communicates, and we want to communicate clearly. So, a simple sentence. What is a simple sentence? A short, simple sentence, strictly defined, has a subject, which is going to be a noun, and a verb. That verb is going to explain what that noun is doing. It consists of one independent clause. An independent clause is a group of words that can stand on its own as a sentence. 
couple of examples of very short, simple sentences. Fish, swim. Fish is your subject, swim is your verb. Another example, koalas eat. Those are the simplest of simple sentences. Simple sentences can also add descriptive words, modifiers to the subject, to the verb, or to both to kind of add expression. It's the, the object of the sentence, for instance. So the bright yellow fish swims swiftly and beautifully. Or the little koalas in the tree eat big eucalyptus leaves. These two are both examples of simple sentences. They have your subject, they have your verb, and they have other descriptions in there. Just having those descriptions doesn't make it not simple anymore. So, sentence pattern one is the idea of the simple sentence. You have a subject plus an action verb plus an object or a subject, a linking verb, or a complement. Linking verbs, remember, are am, is, are, was, or were. Those that aren't showing specific action. And then a complement instead of an object in that instance. So, subject plus verb plus object is your simple sentence. This right here, this is sentence pattern one. This mathematical type formula. This you must write down in your notebooks. This you must put in a place that you can come back and reference time and time again because we're going to be referencing it throughout the semester. So write that down if you haven't already. Simple sentences, as I mentioned earlier, they're always going to be an independent clause expressing a complete thought. For example, fish swim in the river. Fish, your noun, is the subject. The fish is swimming. And the object is, is describing where that action is taking place. In this instance, it's in the river. Koalas eat eucalyptus. Koalas, the noun, is your subject. Eat. What is? What are the koalas doing? They are eating eucalyptus. What are they eating? It's what is receiving the action. They are eating the eucalyptus. That is your object. I am awesome. And don't forget it. Fuzzy Wuzzy was a bear. And it doesn't matter if he has no hair. That sentence is still a simple sentence. Lastly, the giant deadly shark angrily and savagely devoured the helpless swimmer. That is also, again, a simple sentence. It has a lot more description, but it still follows the pattern of subject, verb, and object. So, we're going to play a little game. Answer to yourself, is this a simple sentence? Jason lost his skateboard. Yes. Yes, it is a simple sentence. What about this one? The giant panda bear in the zoo. No. No, that one is not. Any type of sentence can, can communicate effectively the most difficult ideas in the world. Is that a simple sentence? Yes, it is. Even though it's longer, it's still simple. It still follows that basic pattern. Yesterday, all my troubles seemed so far away. Now it looks as though they're here to stay. Is that simple? No. This is what's called a compound sentence. We're going to learn about that in a future video. All right. Sentence fragments. A fragment can be defined as one of the elements of a simple sentence is missing. There's something not there. For example, running through the park at dawn. What's missing? The example, there's no subject. Who is running through the park? Mr. Camparese is running. A giant cheetah is running through the park at dawn. We need that subject so we know the full idea, that complete thought. The big happy sailor on the dock. What's missing here? There's no verb. What is that big happy sailor on the dock doing? Is he singing? Is he dancing? Is he fishing? Is he sleeping? Whatever he's doing, we don't know. Lastly, when Michael Jordan won the Slam Dunk Championship. The, th I, the problem with this one, even though there's a subject, Michael Jordan, there's a verb one, and there's an object, what did he win the Slam Dunk Championship? The problem is, it's not a complete thought. What happened when Michael Jordan won the Slam Dunk, dunk Championship? The crowd went crazy when Michael Jordan won the Slam Dunk Championship. Dunk championship or 
Um, when Michael Jordan won the Slam Dunk Championship, LeBron James pretended to be fouled. Now it's a complete thought. That's what's missing in that example. So, why should we use simple sentences? Well, they have different effects. They can add emphasis or power, especially when simple sentences are among a sea of more complex and compound sentences. It'll really kind of stand out and really add some power. Or to change the pace, to just kind of slow things down a little bit, um, to show action. Uh, simple sentences are very good, especially when they're short, simple sentences, to show quick, concise, decisive action. Uh, and also to force your reader to ponder. If you, if you put a simple sentence in it the right way, by changing that pace, it can slow the reader down and get him or her to think more about it. Um, so, little pop quiz time. Are you ready? Yes. I am a trained killer. Is this a simple sentence, yes or no? Yes. Yes, it is. Steven Tyler of Aerosmith fame. Is this a simple sentence? And if it's not... What's missing? No, this is not a simple sentence. There's no verb. What is Steven Tyler of Aerosmith fame doing? Running along the bike trail. Again, there is no subject. A large hairy man punched a small helpless koala in the... Oh my god, look at that cute koala! Oh! I'm so sorry, koala. A large hairy man punched a small helpless koala in the face. Is that a simple sentence? Sadly, it is. A large hairy man with a small helpless koala along the river. Is this a simple sentence? No. There's no verb. What did he do? Did he punch him? Did he hug him? Did he adopt him? We don't know. So. Here's your practice. This is what you need to have prepared when you come to class. You need a simple sentence with just a subject and a verb. A simple sentence with a subject, verb, and object only. A simple sentence, subject, verb, object with descriptive words. Sentence fragment missing a verb. Sentence fragment missing a subject. And sentence fragment that is not a complete thought. All of these, there are examples within this video. If you need to go back, Feel free to look and find those to help you out. Thank you. Have a wonderful rest of your day.